Today I'd like to show you a few basic tips and texturing techniques. I'm going to start off with a primitive cube here. Now by default the cube, uh, the primitives are just metadata so they're not geometry. So in order to texture them I have to go up to the geometry panel and copy this. And a lot of people make the uh, mistake of texturing in the current view. They just enable it whatever view they're looking at. And then they have to go try and, and fix the texture, rotate it, size it, and things. Now we do have some tools to help. Um, set projection axis will sometimes get you right there right away. Sometimes, like in this case, I'd have to rotate it around. So it's an extra step. So you want to get in the habit of always texturing right from the start because if I just disable and enable, it, it won't make a difference. I'm going to copy this again and, and uh, texture it directly in the front view. So I'm just turn off perspective and make sure I'm right in the front view. Now when I enable texturing, it drops the, the texture on nice and square to the model in the original size. Just so you can see this a little better, I'm going to turn off the blending mode. And another technique I want to show you is to be able to explode geometry and create multiple surfaces. Be careful you don't do this on your original model because uh, you'll lose associativity to um, the actual geometry. But in this case I exploded by color now I have uh, several different surfaces that I can apply different texture maps to. This is nice for creating a decal uh, for example on a piece of surface that you want to keep the actual geometry there. Just make a copy of that surface and surface the um, copy. So next I want to go over to show you how we can go and apply decals another way with 3D panels. So we're going to be putting these textures on uh, the top here. So I'm going to go to one without any texture on it and use one of my tools uh, for navigation that I like to use a lot with texturing alignment on facet. So I just go to alignment on facet and we'll click that and it's going to bring that that surface directly parallel with the model or perpendicular with the uh, view I should say. And now if I enable uh, or go ahead and grab a 3D panel it's going to put it exactly on that surface. Now in this case there's just a hair of a, a, a offset that I need to pull this up a little bit because it might not be exactly flat so I'll just pick that up a millimeter or so. And then when I apply the texture um, on the, the model, or on the label, I'm sorry, it will map right to that 3D panel. In this case, I'm also using a Targa with an alpha channel. I don't want to use a JPEG because I want to use an alpha channel in here. And the alpha channel will provide the transparency of the areas that I need. If I just apply transparency, it will be based on the color of the label not exactly where I want. So I'm now apply transparency. You see how that um, just pulls the areas that I need to be transparent. I can move the model or move the label around, uh, change the size, change the scale, etc. So I'm going to do the same thing on that top surface then and then I'll also show you what an alpha channel is for those of you who aren't aware of it. So I'm going to again use my alignment on facet tool and we'll go up and again brings it nice and neat straight to the view and gives me a positioning for the label. So I'm going to put the 3D panel on here again and just like before grab the uh, I might again position it a little bit up here pull it up a millimeter or so so it's just off of the surface and now I apply that texture. So we're going to just apply the, uh, the targa again. Then I'll jump in and show you in Photoshop um, what the alpha channel actually is. Again, it would, if I just applied it transparency to the color, I would lose that uh, white of the rest of the model. So if I look over here in Photoshop and look at the alpha channel, I can see that it's just the areas I want transparent are black. And I can then save that, that file with the alpha channel and include that in the model. Then when I uh, turn on transparency in com uh, Composer, it will knock out those areas real nice. Now, one last uh, tip then I want to show you too. Let me just adjust this a little bit here. Pull that model over a little bit so it fits perfect. 
And um, now another tip that I want to show you in Photoshop, um, if I'm, I want to texture model like this car, for example, I'd like to take a snapshot of the top view or whatever angle I want to project it at. And then I start to lay my colors. I'll, I can lay different layers of color over that, some decals, etc. So and save that out as a map. And now I have a, a template that I can just make multiple colors, multiple maps. So if I go back into Composer here, you'll be able to see um, the different maps on the model. I can apply that map. And now I use the same template for all the rest of my maps. I just change the, the logos and the decals and the color schemes. And then they just replace them and they all swapped out fine. So it's a, it's a nice workflow. Um, and we'll be getting into some more complex things in the near future. Thanks. Good luck.